sometimes you might be given as simultaneous linear equations in such a way that one of the equation is linear and the other one is quadratic. Uh, I think the best way to solve these simultaneous equations is by substitution and you can as well use graphical solutions. Um, for this one, you can call this equation number one and this other one equation number two. Uh, if you look at this equation, number two is a linear equation. So therefore, you can make either x or y the subject of that equation. Then you later on substitute it into the equation number one. So for this one, let's make y the subject of the equation. y is going to be equals uh, negative 2x minus 2. If you make y the subject, you are going to obtain something like this. Then if you look at equation 1, it says x squared plus 3x plus 4 equals to y. So now you can replace this y with minus 2x minus 2, which is also a value of y. So we end up having x squared from equation 1 plus 3x plus 4 equals instead of y, we replace y with minus 2x minus 2 minus 2x minus 2 then again we need to add plus 2x plus 2 to both sides in order to make this one zero so we add plus 2x plus 2 here and we do the same to the left hand side plus 2x plus 2 then we end up having the whole here we have 0 because minus 2 plus 2 is 0 minus 2x plus 2x is definitely 0 4 plus 2 is 6 our 3x plus 2x is going to give us 5x and we have x squared here uh, and also this one is a quadratic equation which we can solve by factorization I think is better and is the simplest way to uh, solve this type of quadratic equation. So we think of two numbers which when we multiply them we got 6 and when we add them together we get 5. I think the numbers are plus 2 and plus 3. 2 times 3 will give us 6 and 2 plus 3 will give us 5. So when you set each of these factors to be equal to 0 for the first one, we have x equals negative 2, and the other one will give us x equals negative 3. We can call this one x1 and this x2. So we need to substitute these values into this equation in order to obtain the value of y. Uh, for y, for y equals negative 2x minus 2. And you know that y is a function of x, so f of uh, x1, we all know that x1 is negative 2, so whenever we have x, we replace it with negative 2. This will give us negative 2 multiplied by x, and x is negative, one, negative 2. Then we have minus 2. Minus 2 multiplied by minus 2, we end up having a positive 4 minus 2 and this will give us and this will give us a number positive 2 so we have f1 of x1 to be equal to 2 then f2 of x2 which is also a function of x here we have minus 2 then multiply by x of x of 2 and x of 2 is negative 3 negative 3 then we have minus 2 minus 2 negative 2 multiplied by negative 3 is positive 6 minus 2 and this equals 4 therefore x1 and y1 uh, for x1 is negative 2 
for y1, which is f of 1, is positive 2. Then for x2, y2, for x2, we have x2 to be equals to negative 3. And y2 is equal to 4, which is f of 2. Each variable has two values. For x1 and x2, we have negative 2 and a negative 3. And for y1 and y2, we have 2 and 4. If you test these coordinates on this equation, you end up having y is 2, because we have y here. And this is equal to negative 2 multiplied by x, and x is negative 2. The minus 2. And we need to test whether the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. And this time, this is for minus 2. And 2 now equals to 2. So therefore, this coordinate satisfies this equation. Hence, this is a solution. Now you can test these two coordinates again in either this equation or the quadratic function. We have another example. When you have 2x squared minus y squared equals 8 and another equation y minus 2x equals negative 4. This is another simultaneous equation involving one linear and one quadratic. The same thing, you can call this equation 1 and this equation 2. Then from equation 2, y equals, if you take this one to the right hand side, it becomes positive 2x minus 4. And I can call this equation number 3. Now we need to substitute equation 3 into equation 1. For equation 1, we have 2x squared minus y squared, but y is equal to 2x minus 4. So we replace y with 2x minus 4. But y has a square, then we need to square this. And the whole of this equals to 8. Now we need to expand this. So we have 2x squared minus the expansion of this which is our 4x squared minus 16x plus 16. The whole of this equals 8. If you expand this, you definitely have to get this. But this minus is going to distribute through 2x squared minus 4x squared plus, because minus times minus is plus, 16x and minus times plus is minus 16 and this is equal to 8 now by collection of like terms um, we have 2x squared minus 4x squared is negative 2x squared then we have a 16x then minus 16 minus 8 because when x comes in now, it's changed to negative. So negative 16, negative 8, you have negative 24. And this is equal to 0. We can divide now both sides by negative 2. 2. And here we end up having x squared, the minus, because plus divides negative is negative, 8x. Then here we have plus 12 and this is equal to zero now and again we can factorize this we think of two numbers when we multiply them together we get 12 and when we add them together we get a negative 8 so the numbers are 6 and 2 minus 6 and minus 2 because minus 2 times minus 6 is positive 12 and minus 2 minus is minus 8 so therefore if you set each of these factors to be equal to 0 we end up having x to be equal to the first one is positive 2 and the second one is going to be positive 6 we can call this one x1 and this x2 
And for an equation 3, y equals to 2x minus 4, we can substitute each of these uh, values of x in this equation to obtain the corresponding value of y. So y equals 2x minus 4 when x equals to 2. We have y equals when x equals 2, we have y equals uh, 2 multiplied by 2 minus 4. And this is equal to 4 minus 4, which is 0. We have our y1. Then for y2, the same thing when, when x now equals 6, we have y equals 2 times x, 2 times 6. 2 times 6, then minus 4, and this will give us 12, minus 4, this is a value of y, um, this is equals to uh, 8, and this is y2. Therefore, you conclude x1, y1, equals, for x1 we have 2, and for y1 we have 0. And for x2, y2, we have, for x2, we have 6, and y2, we have 8. So these are the values of uh, x and y. You can test each of these coordinates in either this equation or this equation.